everybody Brandon Beliso here it is a new day Friday um, lots of stuff going on in our country um, but today I want to talk to you about the things that are within your grasp things that are within your reach things that are right in front of you that you can do right now and that's number one is recognizing recognizing you are the architect what do I mean by that you are the architect well you are the architect of your life. Mm. I love my chai tea. I love chai tea. One of my pleasures in life is chai tea. Hey, Lawrence, sir. Good morning. Good morning. You are the architect. What does that mean? You are the architect. I really believe you are the architect of your life. Now, um, people would like to believe, and, and, and I have shared the same sentiment, that I'm not, having been born poor, having spent three years of my life in a foster home, there was many times in my life I felt helpless as a child. I was a victim of circumstance. A victim of circumstance. But... The architect is here in the mindset. I had a prime example of that to me till this day is Nelson Mandela. That man was jailed for 20, 25 years and came out of jail and became the president of South Africa. That's that's just that just blows my mind. That blows my mind every day. The fact that yes they could imprison his body, but as an architect, he had already mapped out his mind. He created the blueprint for the way he was going to think. So the circumstance they gave him, which was jail for 20, 25 years, could not affect him. That's pretty amazing. Talk about a blueprint that's drawn so well, drawn so clearly that he was not only able to survive 20, 25, I don't know, I, I, 20 or 25 years he spent in jail not just endure it, he thrived and came out to become president. That blows my mind every day. Every day, every day, that blows my mind. So with that said, with that as a great example, I'm going to tell you, you are the architect of your life. You are the architect of your business. You are the architect. And you draw whatever plans you want for your life, of course. And, and I like using this as you begin to build that home, that business, that life, you will see things need to adapt. Things need to change. It's just the way it goes, right? You envision it in this blueprint. You go to put up that wall and it's got to be changed a little bit based upon ABC or where the plumbing needs to go or the electrical. That is very, very important as well. Because you might draw this plan. This is what I envision my life to be. And if it doesn't go exactly that way, you throw your hands up, you, you give up, and, and you're defeated by that. Don't let that happen, okay? You just redraw a section of the house, right? To adapt. And of course, as things grow, in my case, I get married, I have kids. Well, we got to add another bedroom. we got to make the kitchen bigger, and, and, and those different things happen. So you might have this blueprint. You are the architect. You've designed this life that you envision, but... Things happen along the way and you've got to adjust those plans. Now, you being the architect means you have to lead the project. You have to hire the contractors. You have to hire the subcontractors. I would never just simply throw it up and give it to a general contractor and let them run. No way. I might work side by side with contractors and subcontractors, but I would never simply and blindly give my life up to a contractor to let them build the blueprints I have designed. You feel me? So you're the architect and you are the general contractor. Now who you subcontract, and that being the mentors you choose, you know, you decide if they're the appropriate person or not. So let's say hypothetically we're looking for a consultant or we're looking for a business mentor. What are the some of some of the things you would look for if it was a plumber? What would you look for? If you're looking for a plumber to help build the bathroom from your blueprint, right? And this plumber will be the metaphor for a consultant or a business mentor. What are some of the things you would look for and demand? 
Go. Type it in. What would they be? What would they be? Type it in. What would they be? What's number one? I know what you're going to say, so I'm going to say it too. Would be referrals, right? I would want to talk to three or four uh, other people that have used this guy's service, this plumber's service, right? I would look for their reviews at Google, Yelp, um, I don't know, some construction website. I would look for that. I would probably look for awards, Better Business Bureau, um, you know, different awards that would cater to the fact that they're experienced. I would also look for time. How much time have they spent as a plumber? That's really, really, really important too. That's really important because we know, and somebody posted that and I would have to agree. Nowadays with the internet, you know, you could create this six-figure business coaching without any experience, right? You can do that. Somebody was posting the other day, they weren't even a black belt and they were hired as an instructor to teach and there was a whole thread about that. It's very, very scary what people do. So I would look at time-based. How long have they been doing martial arts? Because I think that's important. If you're going to consult me on my martial arts business, well, guess what? You better freaking have done martial arts, owned a school, been wildly successful, made lots of money doing it, served the community, your values have to be in line of mind. All those things should be there. Could you imagine hiring a plumber who doesn't plumb anymore at all? At all. Who can't pick up a wrench and do a plumbing job. How is he going to communicate to his team to do that job effectively? I think not. I think not. I think a great example that's really come to light is that whole... Um, that woman that they're trying to that was elected to be the educational head of education she knows nothing about that job zero about you know how to manage a budget zero and that's really really scary to me that's really scary to me so I want to be ever mindful of that too we live in a culture where people can be put in a position of authority uh, without zero experience and there's a lot of that not only in our industry but every industry because it's become another way to generate income become a motivational speaker become a consultant become a coach six-figure business and and they do it with courses and, and online e-courses and things like that and and slick marketing that's really scary that's really scary and I'm proud to say I've done the martial arts for 50 years. I'm proud to say that I've taught in schools my whole life. I'm proud to say that I formally opened my first school 17 years ago, and it's still running successfully to the tune of a million dollars a year. I can say that I opened a second location two years ago that grossed $808,000 in its second year, and we did 1.8 million collectively as, as a business. I can say those things, and I can still tell you I teach. I can still tell you you know, as needed, I will get on that mat, I will sweep a floor, I will clean a toilet. I can tell you those things. I'm in the mix every day, every day, every day. So I believe I am qualified to consult a small school owner who's trying to get to four, five, six hundred students. Ask me about multiple locations? Well, I only have two. I probably can't talk to you really well about nine or ten. That would be somebody great like John Broussard or, or Greg Horton, and I would refer you to them, right? So I'm mindful of that too. What is my level of expertise? So you, going back to the question, you are the architect. You are the architect of your business. I want you to educate yourself, please. And the best education you could ever make in life is life experience. Get out there, get dirty, make mistakes, fall down, scrape your knees, get up, think about what you did wrong, make a course correction, right? And along the way, find the mentors. Find the mentors that resonate with your values, that you believe have done it, that are doing it like you. That's super, super important. And watch out for the slick Facebook ad and the, the made-up website. You know, if you could do a sales-based website right now with fake testimonials, stock photos, copy that's not your values, which is out there. We know that. There's ready-made websites right now you can buy for your school that do not represent your school at all but paint it to be this professional branded school and it's not so why can't you do the same thing with um, something like a consultant they can and they do they do 
So you being the architect, you want to hire a plumber, you want to hire yourself that consultant, do your homework, get reviews, look at their history, look at their track record, look see, see how much revenue they generate. Ask them that question. Do you own a school? And if they tell you no, I would probably turn the other way because that simple fact alone, you and I don't share the values. You don't know what it feels like anymore when somebody quits and I'm heartbroken. I am freaking heartbroken when somebody quits. That's just the way, that's just the way I roll because I love teaching. I know the benefits of the martial arts and I wish everybody would do it. Cool? Thank you, Sharon. Sharon loved working with me. I love you too, Sharon. You guys are good people. And that's the other thing, you know, is, is why would you hire somebody just because they make a lot of money? That's not the only reason. You know, do you like them? Do they respect you? Do they treat you properly? All that. I had one mentor, mentor in my life that just was like this hardcore disciplinary and put me down and we lasted about three days. I said, dude, I don't work that way. I don't roll that way. I grew up with a father in the military. That disciplinary mindset works for some people. It doesn't work for me anymore in my life. It doesn't. I want an equal. I want someone that respects me, that speaks to me respectfully, and the band played on. So, you know, I digress with that, but you are the architect. Please, you are the architect. Make that investment, be the best architect, find the best subcontractors, and build the life and business that you deserve. That you deserve. Because you deserve it. All right? Hey, It's Time, presented by Rainmaker Membership Systems with me, Brandon Bleso, is already halfway sold out in two days. Two days. Can you believe that? Two days. Did I say that? Two days. So if you plan on coming, get signed up. Uh, it's a one-day event. It could be a two-day event or it could be a four-day event. Take a look. Take a look at all the different options there. I created something for everybody. Depending upon your level of what, how much time and money you want to invest, I'm going to be there for you. Cool? This is Brandon Lisa, folks. Until we talk again, you go out there and live your best life.